Case 9. Here we can see there's a papule that looks like the epidermis ripped off or picked off or something. Um, it's absent. And then there's like an epidermal collarette on the sides. And in the middle, it looks like kind of reminiscent of granulation tissue, like lots of little uh, vascular proliferation here. Um, and uh, but not like great like lobules or anything, but still uh, looks good with the pale stroma and all that stuff. It looks good for like the pyogenic granuloma. Yeah, very good. This is pyogenic granuloma, also known as lobular capillary hemangioma, a uh, papule that's uh, bulging up from the skin, often ulcerated with neutrophils over top, thus the name pyogenic, but you don't have to have that. So pyogenic granuloma is kind of like the ultimate misnomer because it's not always pyogenic and it's definitely not a granuloma, but as we know in dermatology, old-timey names tend to stick around forever. So um, the appearance can be quite similar to granulation tissue, and sometimes it's hard for me to tell apart is this polypoid granulation tissue or a true pyogenic granuloma. It kind of depends on the context, and it also probably doesn't always matter. Sometimes PGs can be important because even though they're benign, they can be recurrent, and so you, you know, a lot of times people will remove them and cauterize them or do various other things to try to keep them from growing back. Um, because they're ulcerated, you will see um, in large endothelial cells, you can see mitoses, you will see large plump myofibroblasts in the background, you can see vascular damage and neutrophils and sometimes nuclear dust that looks a little like vasculitis. Most of that is, is just secondary to the ulcer and the surface inflammation. So this is a disease that's important, really see it at low power and get the idea, then you can look closer. But if you go straight to high power, you're going to freak yourself out because you're going to see some mites and some mitoses and some big endothelial cells and you're going to start getting scared. Um, and often these are in kids or young adults on the lip or the finger, but they can be other sites too. And you know, here we do actually get a little bit of lobularity down at the bottom. See here we've got a lobule, we've got a lobule, here's a lobule, here's a nice lobule. And the lobules are cellular um, the capillaries that are packed together in these little cellular lobules. And sometimes also as the, the PGs start to re regress or involute on their own, the lobules can kind of start going away and the, the spaces that used to have a lot of capillaries get replaced with fibrosis. So you can kind of have involutional change, which is like kind of more scarring and fibrosis, replacing the nodule of vessels in the pyogenic granuloma, uh, lobular capillary hemangioma. So very nice, uh, nice example here. And the cholerette is a pretty, pretty classic finding that's usually present. There's a cholerette, kind of the, uh, the uh, sweat ducts coming down from the epidermis and scooping underneath the nodule on both sides. And there's a variety of other diseases in derm path uh, that can have that as well. So it's a good clue to learn uh, to help you narrow down your differential when you're starting out at derm path.